imagine a future world in which tiny little robots are programmed by us to do all the work for us. They would have incredible software so that they work flawlessly. They would also have very good battery lives so that they can work autonomously for years. Now, I'm not talking about bad robots, like the ones you see in all those science fiction movies, shooting lasers at each other, fighting on dirty walls. No. Imagine good robots, peaceful robots, robots that can be deployed to the most remote African villages to deliver good food, nutrition, resistance against diseases, and actually help farmers adapt to the climate change. Ladies and gentlemen, the future is here. Today, I'm going to unveil to you not just one, but two of these super amazing technologies. In fact, I have both of them in my pocket right now. That's how small they are. Are you ready for the grand unveiling of Hunger Busters 2.0? Yeah. So, the first Hunger Buster is called Bazooka. Bazooka is a special hybrid maize seed that has been bred to tolerate drought. They call it Bazooka because farmers have been experiencing an explosion in yields in ways farmed, especially in Uganda. This variety is among one of many, more than 200 varieties, that have been bred under an initiative called Draw Tolerant Maize for Africa Initiative. These varieties are bred by public research institutions, including IITA and National Agricultural Research Institutions. Now, before I get into all the amazing features of this variety, I want us to take a moment to unpack just the amazing genius that is seed. Ladies and gentlemen, this tiny little thing that I'm holding in my hand is the perfect marriage between science and nature. Inside this little thing is genetic information, or I would call it software, rather. Software that tells the plant exactly what to do as it grows so that it can meet our human needs. How much information am I talking about? 2.5 gigabases of DNA. Now, if you took each base of DNA and you matched it to one single letter in the full King James Bible, 2.5 gigabases would give you 650 King James Bibles. That's just in one cell of many hundreds of cells that are in this little thing here. Now, even more impressive, imagine that it has taken us 10,000 years for human beings to get this from a wild grass into something that we call maize today. 10,000 years. We were making a big deal a few months ago about Apple, the iPhone, celebrating 10 years of the invention. I am talking about 10,000 years of human breeding and intelligence that is rolled up into this little thing. Now, even more impressive, that information in this seed only takes up a very tiny, small space inside the seed itself. The rest of it is a power bank. Yes, in here is the power bank that allows the plant to grow for the first couple of weeks of growth. I am talking about a standby battery life of two to seven years. Beat that Apple and Samsung. That's without exploding, by the way. <laughs> two to seven years of standby battery life, depending on how you store it. This seed will still germinate and do all these amazing things. Now, let me tell you a little bit about what makes this special variety called bazooka especially amazing. 
On this bar graph here that shows you different yields, you see in orange the hybrid that is susceptible to drought, and in green is a variety like bazooka that has been bred to resist or withstand drought and also to resist some pests and diseases. Compared to regular traditional varieties that most farmers are growing across Africa, modern hybrids can easily increase farmers' yields by 55 to 200 percent. That is quite impressive, because it means you have to use much, much less land to produce the same amount of food. However, what sets bazooka and other drought-tolerant maize varieties apart is when you have a dry year or when you have a drought, these varieties will still give you a decent yield. This is important because in Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa has been experiencing moderate to severe droughts every three years on average. Just last year in 2017, an estimated 37 million African farmers were adversely affected by drought. Now, if there is uh, drought tolerance is just one of the few features that these varieties offer. They also have immunity against certain diseases. Yes, just like vaccines, these varieties have been pre-programmed to be resistant to certain diseases. For example, a, maize, uh, a, a disease called maize lethal necrosis swept through East Africa in the last uh, three, three to five years. Today, varieties such as bazooka are immune to that uh, disease, which would otherwise wipe, up, wipe, wipe out your entire crop. This is the difference that a drought-tolerant variety can make when there is a drought. The bigger crop there is a drought-tolerant variety such as uh, bazooka, and on the right is a regular variety that is susceptible to drought. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the difference between starvation and plenty. We need more of those technologies. Here's a picture of farmers in Uganda proudly showing off their bazookas. <laughs> the look on those farmers' faces say, we have bazookas and we're not afraid to use them. <laughs> and by the way, we are food secure. This is the look that most African farmers should have. Unlike other varieties, bazooka is a double cobra, which means that for every plant, it gives you two cobs. Most other varieties will give you one cob. So that already is doubling your yield in most of the cases. The second hunger buster that I'm going to talk about is called Nabe 15. It's a super bean that has been developed by the Pan-African Bean Research Alliance, or PABRA for short. This is one of more than 500 new varieties with special features such as draw tolerance, ability to thrive in low fertile soils, higher yielding, pest and disease resistance, and shorter cooking times as well. Let's take a moment to compare how this Nabe 15 compares to a traditional variety that farmers are already growing. First of all, Nabe 15 will mature a month earlier than the traditional varieties. You can eat this one month earlier. Second, this variety is tolerant to more diseases, including root rot, bean rust, hello blight, and several other diseases that would otherwise decimate your entire crop with traditional varieties. It is also drought tolerant, so it means that in the event of a bad year, when you have a drought, it can still give you a decent yield. And I love this feature the most. This variety has been bred to cook in a shorter cooking time. It takes 45 minutes to cook this variety, compared to more than one hour for most of the traditional variety. Shorter cooking times means less energy consumed. It means less trees that are being cut for firewood. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that pink little green, the pink little bean is actually green. It's good for the environment as well. Don't just take my word for it. Let's hear what farmers in Uganda are saying about this new bean. Mr. Charles Litiago says that on one acre, and get 250 kilograms. But the local one yielded between 40 and 70 kgs. That's the difference. This one is much easier to cook. It doesn't waste fuel. Another quote from a farmer, and I especially love this one, 
from Miss Evelyn Ariemo. She says, it makes me some money. It pays school fees for my children. This is what we're talking about here, changing livelihoods. Most importantly to consumers, this bean is delicious. Everybody loves this new variety, especially the young kids. They think it's yummy. And yet hidden in that yumminess is micronutrients. This bean is much higher in micronutrients, higher in zinc and higher in iron, which makes for better nutrition for these kids. So you're delivering yumminess and you're delivering good nutrition at the same time. I think that is a winning combination. So you must be wondering, how much do these hunger busters cost? Well, for such amazing technology, I would be willing to pay an arm and a leg. Hundreds of dollars? No. On average, one kg bag of hybrid maize seed across Africa costs you less than two dollars. Given that there is more than 5,000 kennels in that bag, I'm talking about for one penny, you're getting 20 or more of these little hunger busters. I think that is affordable, even for most resource poor farmers. That is not too much, given what this technology can do. If you look at bean, it is even cheaper per kg, at $1.10 per kg. And what's more amazing about bean is that because it's a self-pollinating crop, farmers can use it more than once. It's not a hybrid. They can use it for up to four years, and they can share it with their neighbors. So I'm talking about a technology that is capable of self-reproduction. Can you tell me any other cell phone out there that can create itself? This technology can do that. It can create itself and allow farmers to use it over and over again. Perhaps the best feature of all these technologies is how easy they are to use. Despite the millions of dollars that go into research and development, despite the complicated science of plant breeding, which I don't even understand myself, farmers do not need to know all that. All they need to know is you take this little thing, you put it in the ground, you pray for good rains, and it grows, much like your regular variety. The bag that uh, comes with this seed does not have any instructions on it, maybe a few farming tips, but there's no manual needed. Farmers already know how to do this. There's very few technologies that are that complicated and yet so simple to use. That's the amazing power of seed. I'm sure some of the skeptics in the audience are already wondering, is this guy talking about GMO or some kind of special Frankenstein laboratory seeds? <laughs> no. All the examples that I gave here, all the hundreds of varieties that I'm talking about that are drought tolerant from Pabra, the bean varieties, they come from conventional breeding that has been around for thousands of years. While personally, I do not see, I do not have any problem with GMO technology, my personal opinion, none of these technologies are GMO. I believe every technology should be evaluated on its own merit. Here comes the challenge. I just gave you an example of two new varieties out of hundreds or thousands that are out there. Breeding and developing this, the science of breeding, is just the first in a very long process that it takes to get these varieties out there. Unfortunately, for these hunger busters to work, they need to be able to move from research laboratories all the way to farmers' fields. And this is an area where we still have a long way to go. Unfortunately, a lot of these good varieties are sitting out there in research laboratories, creating good publications, never finding their way to the farmers. Some of the key challenges that are stifling that delivery is, for example, awareness. We need to have a coordinated campaign out there that can market these varieties in much the same way that Apple and Samsung market the latest cell phone. We need to get that information out there. Awareness is the first step in adoption. We need to get this information out to farmers. Secondly, in most of the countries, we need policy and regulatory reform that will create what we call an enabling environment that will allow for the private sector to thrive. I'm not just talking about big multinational companies. I'm talking about small, local, 
African oil companies that are delivering these technologies to farmers. We also need strategic investments in key areas where we have bottlenecks that are stopping the de delivery of these technologies all the way to farmers' fields. I am coordinating a project right now called the African Seed Access Index, or TASAI for short. And in this project, we have gone to 17 African countries. And we try to identify for each crop and for each country, where do we see the key bottlenecks in this delivery system from research and development all the way to closing the last mile on farmers' fields. Ladies and gentlemen, hunger and malnutrition cause poverty. And poverty causes malnutrition and hunger. It is a vicious cycle. Fortunately, we have technologies today, including improved seed and other agricultural innovations, that can allow us to break this vicious cycle and deliver good food that is nutritious, that can create new livelihoods for rural people, and most importantly, give dignity to the millions of farmers in rural Africa that rely on agriculture for livelihoods. Thank you very much for your time.